I'm Ray Ray. And I am Dave. And we welcome you again to the upstairs studio of Tag Your It. And uh, this time, we have Andrea DiLorenzo on the show to talk about New Age. So how you doing, Andrea? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. So uh, one thing that uh, she already noticed uh, whenever we just uh, <laughs> talked beforehand was uh, I've got a lot of Denver Broncos stuff. If I'm sure you guys out there already has seen that, but yeah, she used to be a Denver Broncos cheerleader, so she is mm-hmm. right at home. This is a little piece of Colorado <laughs> uh, here in Springfield, yes. Missouri. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so welcome, welcome. Anybody that has a, uh, been a part of the Denver Broncos organization <laughs> is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrea, we are so grateful that you would take the time to uh, visit with us. I was mm-hmm. first, um, I was, I guess, tipped to your testimony on another YouTube page, and I thought, man, that would be really good stuff for us. We have not really visited with anyone about uh, New Ageism, and that is a, um, a a cult that you have had some interaction with. And so, uh, if you don't mind, just begin. I know Adam introduced you a little bit as having been a uh, cheerleader at one point uh, for the Denver Broncos, but uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are, and uh, yeah, maybe yeah. what you do. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I currently reside in Colorado. I was born and raised here. Um, I grew up a dancer, so I was in ballet and tap and jazz and um, danced in the 96 Atlanta Olympics and the Orange Bowl halftime shows and in Disney World. And um, I just had a real passion for dance uh, growing up, and that's what got me into uh, becoming a Denver Bronco cheerleader at a very young age. And yeah, it was only a couple years of my life, but I would say they were very pivotal and significant years of my life uh, because I also happened to have cheered um, the Monday night football game um, the night before uh, September 11th, 2001. And so it was significant for me in that I went from this high of, you know, being a part of this big game. It was our inaugural year at Invesco Field and my first Monday night football game I was on TV. It was very significant. And then, or it was just this high, I guess I should say. And then, um, I was blasted with, uh, the news of September 11th and it just took my life into a whole other direction. And we'll talk more in detail about that as we go along. Um, but long story short, I, I moved to Los Angeles for several years, which is uh, where I got most involved in the new age and um, came back home, uh, not by my choice, but by, I think, God's providence and that I, I couldn't be out there anymore. And so I came back home to Colorado um, in 2017, and I was saved in 2017. Amen. And um, now I currently, I, I quit my work in New Age um, instantly, and I um, s- applied for jobs at a Christian bookstore uh, basically the week I was saved. And then yeah. now I currently work at a Christian university here wow, in Colorado, so and I'm well, going to school there as well. So. Very, very good. Well, so... I hear a lot of people talk about New Ageism, and I really did not know what the New Age movement was or any uh, concrete definition of it until I read (laughs) Walter Martin's Kingdom of the Cults. And uh, that was the first time that I really engaged the thought of what New Ageism is. So Mm -hmm. if you don't mind, just give us a little bit of an understanding. You're the first guest we've ever had on. Uh, We've been doing our podcast for two years now. You're Mm -hmm. the first guest we've ever had on 
who were going to consider a, an expert, someone who's had a great deal of experience with the New Age cult. So could you kind of tell us what that is? And, and if you really could find a, uh, you know, an objective universal definition, or is it just kind of subjective? Share with us a little bit about that. Yeah. So what's so fascinating about all this is I didn't realize I was in New Age until I was out of New Age. Oh. So um, I would definitely say it's mostly subjective, but if I were to find some kind of um, or, or put some kind of objective definition on new age, I would just say it's, it's alternative spirituality and it, it combines Eastern religious beliefs with Western new thought and metaphysical practices. Um, my understanding is this really started taking shape and form in the, in the sixties and seventies during the hippies movement. And, um, is 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 mostly about seeking happiness and seeking your own personal joy in whatever shape that by that might mean by whatever means necessary. That is really good definition. Oh yeah, and uh, I think that, that gives us a lot to work with. And I really appreciate how you said you know you didn't really even realize that you were. Uh, part of the New Age movement until you got out of it. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, an ex and I would assume that that would be something you would note about a lot of people. Would they maybe just say, well, I'm a really spiritual person. And I would assume right. that would be kind of the way that they would engage that idea. Absolutely. So now let's talk a little bit about your personal experience, if that's okay. Um, yeah. You told us a little bit about your background in dance, how you danced mm -hmm. in the Olympics, how you were a, a professional cheerleader for the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. And then 9-11 happens. It becomes mm -hmm. a real, uh, I guess, earth-shattering moment for you. So tell us kind of how you got into the New Age movement uh, as a whole. Yeah, well, the main thing was that I was in pain. I was in pain spiritually, emotionally, mentally. I was dealing with severe depression. And for whatever reason it might be, I... My, my doctor had prescribed some antidepressants, but I chose to go the natural route. I wanted to find a way to heal naturally. And I also, I, I didn't want to suppress my feelings. That was kind of my big thing at the time. So um, I started getting into um, holistic health and just seeking ways um, to help um, I guess heal my mind through foods and, and then it, it's, it got into uh, say essential oils. Well, the holistic health field is infiltrated with Eastern religious practices, including yoga and meditation. So that led me into yoga and then that led me into meditation. And then that led me into, um, finding uh, teachers and authors that could teach me about self-healing. And so I was practicing uh, completely relying on myself to heal myself and to come into wholeness. And, and the whole, um, the whole premise was coming to some kind of realization that I thought was the truth and that I am actually whole at my core but I just have to peel away all of my programming from society and my family and culture and everything else that told me otherwise in order to get to the core of that I am perfect, whole, and complete, which, of course, is um, not true. And yeah. But I was... That, that was my whole goal was I just had to seek more and dig more and go deeper and heal more and, and cleanse my mind more and eat better. I mean, it was just constant, constant searching and seeking. So I, I guess you could say, I mean, because I mean, the, right now, I mean, you can really get into like maybe Christian science. Um, basically, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that you in, of, in and of yourself were a good, healthy, whatever on the inside. But everything right. around you, like pretty much it's like it's an illusion that somehow you need to get rid of. Like, so, you know, you've been told this, um, you've been raised in this, and there's like this illusory social construct that you're living. And you yes. need to get rid of that social construct, what people say about you or what something else 
uh, informs you and you inform yourself about yourself and in a way you can make yourself better by really like you said doing yoga and meditating you think yourself better and so really it's you know you can really get into that like word faith or yeah. um, or christian science um, oh yeah you can see that the basis of that is what you were going through in a certain way um in your exactly. own subjective way it's exactly not, yes it's not too big of a jump here kind of and or, or too big of a, uh, I don't want it to be difficult for you, but kind of walk us down that rabbit trail that you fell into. I mean, you were yeah. raised, if I remember right from the video that mm -hmm. I had seen before, you were raised Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. You kind of were, you know, you believed there was a God, but you weren't really active in the faith. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of these great, what people would consider really awesome professional opportunities open up to you. You leave home and you are struck with depression and you try mm -hmm. to seek a means to uh, deal with that and kind of walk mm -hmm. us down that, uh, I guess that's that slippery slope. Yeah. So the big turning point where it, it took me into a whole deeper level in the new age was, so I was doing yoga, I was doing the meditation. And then um, I watched this video of this man who I ended up working for, um, and the, the message of his video was love and that um, we are all here for love and we're all here to love. And so I heard that message and I was so inspired and I just, I made this declaration and I just said, I'm here for love. I'm here to love people. That's what I'm here to do. And I want to fix anything in myself that might prevent me from loving others more. So it really became, again, about looking to myself to be the carrier of this perfect love. And, um, and so also then around that same time, what happened is I had what is called a Kundalini awakening and it was a spontaneous awakening. And so to be honest, I don't, I, there's, I know only so much, I know the spirit so well, um, but there's still a lot about it. I don't fully understand. So I had, what happened was, was I, I blinked my eyes one day and, and after I had known, you know, I was just inspired and I was like, I'm here for love. I'm here to love people. This is my mission. This is my purpose because all these years I had been seeking meaning and purpose. And especially after September 11th, it was, I was just asking all of those existential questions of why am I here? What is, why are, what are humans here for? What are we here to do? And, and so I just made this blanketed declaration that I'm here for love. So um, I was like just fully inspired and I, I closed my eyes and I, I opened my eyes and there was this surge of energy that went through my spine. Now, at this time, I had no idea what spiritual awakening was. I had no idea what kundalini was. But all I know is the next three months, um, if I had never done drugs, but I felt like I was on drugs. It, I was walking on the same planet, obviously, I'd walked on my entire life. But I, it was almost as if I, I felt like I was in another dimension, almost like I was walking above. And it's just how I would imagine if, you know, being on psychedelics. It, it felt like that. And I would go to bed at night. And it was like, the way I would describe it is that beings were inside of me, working on me. Like, I was never actually sleeping at night. It was just constant at, like energy moving through my body. And so I was describing this to someone I worked with for, for months, you know, just, and I was seeing things I'd never seen before. Um, and it's really intense just even remembering because, um, I went to work and this guy brings me this book and he goes, Andrea, I think this is what's happening to you. I think, this is what's going on with you. You, you had a Kundalini awakening and, and apparently there's, there's something called Kundalini yoga. And the whole point of Kundalini yoga is to try to activate this like spiritual 
force that, that moves up your spine. And um, it's, uh, people have related it to a serpent <laughs> moving up your spine. And I felt that in my body for the next however many years, I don't even know, uh, eight years maybe? Well, let's see, uh, seven years, six, seven years. Um, and the other thing is that it, I, I suddenly had these gifts that I never knew I had. And those sort of, I, I started, those started developing through time. And I don't know if we want to get into that right now. Um, but yeah, that's what really took me to a whole other level with all of these practices. So explain one little thing to me. I, I mm -hmm. hear people talk about Kundalini, and mm -hmm. uh, again, I assume that that is from the uh, from a Near Eastern type of spiritualism. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, explain to me, like, is that uh, where does that term come from? And uh, give me just a little bit more on that and where it originates, yeah. if that makes any sense. Because uh, that's something that literally I had never even heard until I watched a, a video on New Ageism. <laughs> And it was completely mm -hmm. foreign, like, what, if you do know, like, where did that first come from? And, and do we see that, you know, in, in other religions? Like, uh, where is it based? Does that makes any sense? Um, yeah, it does make sense. And I'm so sorry. I don't have those answers. I don't actually know. I know, um, like I said, there is kundalini yoga, and that's definitely gained a lot of popularity mm -hmm. in the West. Yeah. So I know that it's um, it's some sort of Eastern. It comes from the Eastern religious beliefs somewhere, yogic. I yeah. Well, this is a great example of here. Mm -hmm. People were bringing this uh, hyper, hyper spiritualism mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. even mysticism into your life. You're experiencing these things. You're seeing these things. So you are still working as a cheerleader. Um, you are practicing yoga. You're dealing with your depression by reaching out to these um, different approaches for dealing with it. Then what's kind of the next step as you begin to move along in this process? Well, yeah. So the next step was that this guy that I saw this video of, I he facilitated these seminars in Bali. And I decided that I wanted to go. So I went to Bali and um, it, that was a 10 day, I was there for a couple of weeks, but the actual um, seminar with him was about 10 days. And, you know, I'm kind of sensitive to how much I share about oh, yeah. that just because, yeah. but um, a lot happened um, during that time that when you see this stuff, um, especially without without the word without the bible and without understanding what's what's actually happening when you see this stuff it's very wondrous i mean it truly is you you see it and you're like how how can you not believe in this how can i not believe that people are being healed and people are being delivered and people are finding themselves and they're finding true happiness and and all of that bondage that was covering them, you know, these people and these healers are, are removing that from them. And um, people are going on and, and living these happy lives. So I decided I wanted to work for him and be a part of that journey and a part of that mission. So I got even more kind of entangled um, watching more of these seminars being facilitated. Um and I started to, I started seeing um, spirits like in the room. I started just and very. And you're not using any hallucinogens at this no. time. You're not doing any drugs. If, if you're taking anything, it's just natural medicine. Am I correct in that? Yes, absolutely no drugs. And no, I didn't smoke weed. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, the I, only I, reason I, was, I, I did asked not is, need any of that. It yeah. felt like I was on this constant high. And if you were to look back on my old Instagram or my old Facebook, you could see it. I mean, you could see that I, I mean, even the things I was saying, none, of, I was reading back through it and none of it made sense to me anymore. It's like I was just speaking 
from the air. I mean, completely um, unintelligible, really. So you certainly had this deep spiritual hunger and you had a deep depression and mm -hmm. you're seeing these things. Um, there are uh, very serious spiritual forces that yes. you are engaging and you are feeling and you're hungering for them. Now, you mm -hmm. originally began to kind of jump into this because of your depression. Um, yes. Was some of that being um, fulfilled? Like, were you uh, able to feel right? Like, you know, uh, you talk about how you said, well, I, you know, I wasn't, I, I've never done any hard drugs or anything like this, but boy, I sure felt like this is what was, what would be consistent with what some of these people would be going through. Uh, and you're on this spiritual type of high. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about like how that, uh, began to deal with your depression and even tell mm -hmm. us with while you are uh, going to Bali while you're coming back what is uh, what does everyday life look like for you as, as a person who's in the new age movement and, and what does it look like to, to practice this um, as part of your lifestyle I'm assuming that you are uh, at some point here you're going to be walking away from your professional career am I correct mm -hmm. about that I mean and this is becomes what you do. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So I was working for him and then, um, but I started again, those quote unquote gifts I, I was mentioning were starting to develop. And so I wanted to take that on my own. I wanted to start taking clients on, on my own. So, um, the depression didn't go away. I mean, it, I, I, I was, disillusioned for sure. I, 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 I think I definitely thought I, I thought things were moving and, and I was so focused on these spiritual experiences that I was having. And I thought it meant something really great about myself and my capacity spiritually that I think I was more, it was like, if I keep having these experiences, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. So really, I wasn't even paying attention until down the road, which I'll get to, um, when the darkness got very heavy, very heavy over me. Um, and I knew something was wrong. I knew that I was seeing uh, people that were in this movement with me who we were, it was like we were constantly seeking these spiritual highs. And if we weren't on that high, we were completely depressed. Something was wrong and we need to get ourselves back into that high. Wow. So we measured how um, well we were doing based off of how high our experiences were. And one of probably um, the overarching visual I have of my time. And when you asked about a day in the new age was walking around the beaches of Santa Monica with my friends, all of us talking about who knows even what kind of spiritual things and accessing new dimensions and, and um, ascension, you know, that, Eventually, we're just going to always we're going to ascend like beyond our our bodies and and be able to achieve some kind of eternal state of like high we called it like higher consciousness and we actually believed that the second coming of Christ was actually a Christ consciousness and and millions of people all over the world that that was actually the second coming yeah. that's what we believed. And so we were, so yeah, it was always trying to achieve those highs. So through meditation, um, through healing, through like energy healing, um, through just the conversations we would have, we were constantly um, digging into each other emotionally, constantly analyzing each other. Um, you know, if, if one of us was triggered, you know, that was a, a a common term being triggered. It was like, okay, so, you know, what's that trigger about? There's something wrong. There's something off and you need, we need to shift that and you need to take care of that. 
it was it was a lot like there was nothing really happening out in the world everything was happening inside of you that's what we believe so if we if there was something we didn't like out in the world we believed that we had to fix that within ourselves that it was a problem in ourselves if we saw a murder happen and it hurt us we i mean this is no joke we felt responsible for that and that and if we didn't like that that happened, and if we're seeing um, this happen, kind of certain things happen, like on a collective, like say politically, um, collective, you know, darkness or whatever happening on, a, say, global scale or national scale, we believed that it was up to the individual to heal in themselves and then for more and more humans to achieve that light or whatever it was so that we can see a healed and restored planet. Wow. Yeah. And that, that is, uh, that is out in, there. But, so now uh, yeah. this, so what were some things that you would use as tactics to bring people in? Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, obviously you were thinking, man, we've got, we've got this right. We are we are good, and I'm assuming that you uh, you had a, a fairly good group of individuals that you were. Hey, this is what we do together. You said you're yeah. walking on the beach with your friends. Would you reach out to to people and be like, Hey, let let us tell you about what we have that is so good, and and how would that? What would those conversations look like? In other words, well, yeah, I I. Well, you know, again, we didn't know we could we didn't have any standard of truth. We had no direction. There was nothing to really quote sell people into, if you will. What I would say I did though is I like idolized these men that were around me. They were really strong spiritual men, including that man that I worked with. Mm -hmm. So if if I was ever trying to bring people in, it was trying to bring women specifically or yeah, and men too, actually, into their presence so that they can do their work on them. So, or like, then when I started my own business, I never really, um, I, I don't think I was trying to get people to come to me, but I was definitely marketing what other people were saying they were experiencing as a result of working with me, if that makes sense. So yeah, that makes like perfect people, sense. people would come to me and th certain things would happen and then they would go and share a, a testimony of what happened. And then, and so what happened in my business was it started to be where I was working with mostly only men. And so this is kind of an interesting thing. And again, this is something I've not fully made sense of. I, it, in so many ways, it really doesn't matter, but I'll share this. And when I, when I spoke about those gifts, um, men would come into session with me. It would either be, or in women too, but mostly men, it would either be Skype or in person. And I started recognizing that I was starting to notice, um, like different sensations in my body that I, had never noticed before. Like, for example, uh, one person would be sitting in front of me and I would start feeling this heat in my arms, like burning heat in my arms. And I was like, man, that's weird. Where is this coming from? So I started testing these sensations and I would ask them, okay, what's going on in your body? And I wouldn't say a word and they'd go, oh, my arms are burning. My arms are burning right now. It's really weird. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So I started realizing that as I was going into these sessions and I don't know, I'm sure there's a term for this, a new age term. I, I never looked into it, but I was able to, and I don't know what was actually happening in these scenarios, but I would, I would notice what's happening in their body. Um, and I would know that it was because I would test, I would ask, and then I would do some kind of healing work on it. And then they would start opening up to me and sharing their, I mean, we would call that sin, but at the time I did not call it sin, but just things they were hiding in the closet that they'd never told anyone before. And they would just pour their hearts out to me about addictions they had and um, pornography and food and, um, 
prostitution and cutting and I mean, all kinds of things. They would just share these things with me. And, you know, of course, like I said in the beginning, my whole mission was just to love, to love everything and just to love. So they would share those things with me. And then I, my whole goal was to, to just love them. And then they would go on and like a lot of them were then telling me they weren't addicted to those things anymore. And so it was very, and I don't know where they're at in their lives these days. I don't know. I don't know anything. I am not glorifying that in any way. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you are. I think you're demonstrating yeah. like the true evilness, the true deception mm -hmm. of yes. this and how real it is. And, and that's one of the things that's really interesting to me. I see this being... Uh, very much in the new ageism that you are describing, there's this sense of uh, of power and spiritual, um, uh, I guess, spiritual high uh, mm -hmm. that you have over others, right? Yes. So you have this, you know, again, you, you said it so well. You said, well, like there was this other dimension and people just mm -hmm. would not realize like that actually was there. And you had stepped into a evil realm and mm -hmm. had gotten caught up into that. But then you step out into society and you see these people that are actually hungry for some type of a spiritual experience. And guess what? You can provide that for them. Yeah. And it's truly a powerful thing. Yeah, and this is yeah. I mean, a testimony to the fact that, you know, as Christians who believe um, every word that God has ever revealed to us in the scriptures is, you know, a lot of times um, people like Andrea get discounted um, from the very get-go. Um, mm -hmm. And we don't need to do that. We need to realize that there are demonic forces in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We're not just battling um, material things. We're battling principalities. And yes, powers. we are. And so what she is experiencing, we have every warrant to believe this really happened. Yeah. Um, and that uh, these people that she was talking to, um, like she was actually probably feeling like she was given the power to feel these things and so mm -hmm. but how we interpret that situation now with the word of god is you know different than oh way, yeah you, know, you were interpreting it then um but you know just a, to, the real sense of uh, what i want to get out there is that this stuff is real and we mm -hmm. have to deal with it we can't just sweep it under a rug and say eh, and then and then switch to a naturalistic hermeneutic whenever because that's not consistently christian yeah, um, yeah. we have to yeah. deal with the stuff and listen to people and go no, you actually really lived that. You actually felt that. You actually did that. This was real. And mm -hmm. we need to deal with people like you that are caught up in this stuff that haven't been delivered from it yet. Yeah. And be able to, and be able to go like, no, I understand what you're doing is real. I'm not going to sit here and discount you and call you crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to call you. You have been possessed. Um, and you need yeah. to meet Jesus Christ and yes. so that the demon can flee. Um, you. So, you know, I think uh, that's what I wanted to, since we're in the middle of this is to definitely, Thank since we've you. been talking all this stuff, the people that are watching, you know, we need to treat this as something real because again, we have scriptural warrant to yes. believe so. Yeah. And to be honest, what I'm sharing with you right now is just from people I know in New Age and also others who are just coming out of it, just even the last couple months who are no place to openly share their testimonies, what even what they have shared with me has floored me. Okay. But I, of course, I, I believe them. So if you can imagine that what I'm sharing with you is just a, a small portion of what is happening out there um, spiritually is, I mean, I, I do think more and more people will start that are being delivered and, and being saved and coming to the Lord and submitting fully to him. Um, some of the stories I've heard just over the last couple months have made me, my past almost look light, <laughs> much lighter, you know, I mean, yeah. So, so now tell me when, you started to, uh, you're obviously, you are seeing massive spiritual stuff going on and you're not attuned to the fact that it's evil, but you're thinking, oh man, this is good stuff. And yeah. you are seeing um, people being, it seems like delivered from right. these physical ailments, from this oppression and um, what begins to change? 
So uh, I I went and so what begins to change is I started noticing that there was just like this glossiness over this whole movement. Like there was sort of this appearance of people healing and being happy and coming to true freedom. But, uh, but, and it appeared that way, but it was almost like I started to see that that's not what was actually happening. You know, as the word tells us, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And it was like, I was starting to see through, um, the illusion that this whole movement is. And, um, but not only that, I, my depression got even worse from when I start began this whole journey. And I spent the next two years, um, laying in bed at night and see, it's kind of interesting. If you talk to people that know me and have known me all my life, like family or, even friends that were in that movement with me, um, I don't know if they would even have been able to recognize how, well, that's not true. There were people that I found out later were really worried about me. Um, but I don't know if they realized, anyone realized how bad it was where I was laying in bed at night and I was having what felt, seemed like real conversations. And I just called him the darkness I just, it was like dark spirit. That's all that I knew how to relate to it. And, and I, I, I was tormented at night of, with thoughts of, um, that I'm a burden and that I need to kill myself, um, and that I'm worthless to this world and I'm nothing and my life is nothing. And I'm, I'm, you know, just what a bad person I was. And I mean, really the whole goal was you need to kill yourself. And I got to a point where I would talk, I mean, seriously, I would like talk back out loud, just crying, screaming, hysterical, just so upset and just saying, take, if, you know, if you want me that bad, just take my life then. Like, I don't care. Just take it. Like, take me in my sleep. I don't want to deal with this anymore. You know, I was just... And then I would, and that was almost every single night, these kinds of conversations and weeping and despair and um, just wanting to, to be taken away. Now, I, I don't know that I, I don't think I was suicidal because I didn't want to kill myself, but I did want to die. I wanted to die. So, um, yeah, so that's when, and then I, I would try and describe the the spiritual like black hole that I, I went into because, but that would just be too much. I yeah. think, I think it's too much, but there was a point where I ran now maybe about six months before I was saved. I wrote this and I read it not too long ago. It really still made no sense. But anyway, the point of this post that I wrote and where I was at was that I was renouncing everything new age. Like I was so angry. I was angry at these, the spiritual stuff. I was angry at God. I was, I, I mean, I was so angry Mm -hmm. and you could hear the anger and the sadness and the brokenness and what, and my writings too. So, yeah. So So I, so at that point I renounce all of it and I'm just left, you know, to myself, I guess at this point, that's how it felt to me. Like I was just alone in this dark world, you well, know? I mean, yeah. So it really did lead you where it led you. It led you to yourself to take care of yourself. Yes. And then you found out that you can't, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you I mean, put that so, so perfectly. I mean, yes. you, you got what you wanted. That is so true. And, and you found out what you wanted wasn't oh, really wow. what you wanted. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, never I, looked. And just to think about your uh, experience there that, you know, you were begging for death and you could not get it. That is as close to hell. And luckily, yeah. um, since Christ has come into your life, um, luckily that's as close as you're going to get. You know, that's amazing. So I mean, mm-hmm. just, just to think about those experiences, you got exactly what you wanted and it left, yes. you, with, it left you with nothing. Wow. And so I'm so glad to hear that. Yes. You, you, you wow. Christ, I have never thought crazy. of it that way, but you are, that is so, that sums it all up. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So share with us how you began to get in this black hole where you then renounce things. What begins to stir in your heart? How does, how does God get a hold of you? Um, so through all of this, um, my very first day in LA when I started working for 
uh, this, that guy, um, I go to a coffee shop with my computer to sit down and start working. And this girl happens to be sitting next to me and who happens to be a Christian. So that was in 2012, I think. And if you can imagine, I was saved in 2017 and she stuck with me through all those years. Um, praying for me. She told me later she had her church praying for me, sharing her testimony of her coming out of, uh, she was had drug addictions and alcohol addictions and how um, Jesus saved her. And she would talk about Jesus to me. And I asked her recently, what, how did I respond to that? And she said that I never, I never was annoyed. I never, um, uh, yeah, I, I didn't bother me when she shared, but it was almost so separate from me. I, I couldn't understand. It was like, well, that's that's really good. I'm really glad that works for you. I'm really glad Jesus works for you. But I have these other things. Like I, I really viewed Christianity as very superficial. I believed. I didn't know the word was alive. I had I had no the word the Bible to me was just words, man written words, you know, so I thought that man was just um, programming these Christians to believe something that wasn't true, and they were limited, and they didn't have, they weren't spiritual enough, you know, that's kind of how I viewed it, uh, Christianity, but she said that I did always, I listened, but she also told me that through those years, she did not know how God was going to save me. Um, she said, you know, she believed and for some reason God gave her that strength to sit by me because I know for sure if I met myself, I could not have been as close to me as she was to me. (laughs) If I met myself now, that would have been very hard. I don't know. I only by God's grace. Um, so there was that and that she was started. Um, so, and then I remember September cause I have the receipt. I decided I wanted to buy a Bible. So this was after I renounced all the new age stuff. And I, I decided I wanted to buy a Bible. I couldn't even open it. I mean, it was so hard. I had it sitting there, but I, I just, I didn't have, I couldn't begin to try and understand how to read it. Um, so then it was maybe a few months after that, I called my friend on the phone and I said, uh, would you be able to lead me in a Bible study? I want to do this Bible study. I want to be, um, I want to meet every week and I want to start reading the Bible. And she said she was on the other end and her jaw was just dropped. (laughs) And, um, so, but still, if I, cause we had like a little Facebook group, I invited some of my other new age. Well, again, I wasn't necessarily a part of new age, but I still had friends and that. And so I invited them into this with me. And, um, I remember reading through the group and I was still trying to spiritualize everything I was reading in the Bible, you know, trying to find the mysteries and, and, and make it all mystical and spiritual and everything I was reading. Um, And it's still just, you know, again, it was, it was like reading any other book, reading the Bible Mm. at that time. So, um, and then I don't know if you want me to share just to where, when I was saved. Yeah, please. So, um, so there was one night that just like any other night I had ever been, that I'd been going through all these um, years, except it was getting even more scary where I felt like I thought, or I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I can't make sense of all this, but like, like spiritual entities were even outside my window. I thought they were watching. I mean, I w- I was having anxiety at night. I was scared. I was so scared. And, um, then there this night i just knew and i don't know how i just knew that jesus was there and i knew i i i mean it was like he was standing in my room and i rolled out of bed fell on my knees and i instantly knew my sin i instantly knew cuz i was still doing so i should say this i still had my practice going on i still was taking clients hmm. So I guess I didn't fully renounce the new age. I just renounced, I don't know. I, I can't really even say, to be honest, what 
I don't know. I, I think I just renounced like being associated with a lot of the groups that I was a part of is probably what it was. Um, so, cause I still had clients, but they were all falling away. They were, I, I, I oh, this is something kind of interesting too. Um, the, like the last month leading up to being saved, um, I started telling my, cl- asking my clients if they knew Jesus mm. Mm. and I started and, and I did, I didn't, but I was asking them if they did. And I was telling them that they needed to go to Jesus, that mm. they needed to pray to him and that I can't do this anymore. I started telling them that I do remember that. So, but I wasn't going to him. So, okay, back to my bedroom. Um, I fell at my knees. I knew my sin. I knew um, I, I conf- was just confessing everything before him and crying for I don't know how long. I think a couple hours. And um, and I, I just knew suddenly that he was my Lord and Savior. And, you know, at the time, I, I, I do remember saying something like, my life is yours. Like I just kept saying, I, my, I, my life is yours. You know, I give my life to you. And I know I didn't actually have to do that, but that's what I kept saying. It was just like my mind, my heart, my body, this, my whole life is yours now. And, um, I woke up the next morning and that darkness was lifting and I knew it and I knew my life was different and everything changed. And I I remember going and meeting up with my cousins and telling them and saying, it's like God came into my chest and ripped my heart out and put a new heart into my chest. I like that language. That's pretty (laughs) scriptural. (laughs) Yes, it is. Exactly. And, um, but then again, it was like a couple days before it hit me that I was a Christian and but then I, I just clicked and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm a Christian, you know, and I knew that um, I was saved. And I but I never knew what that meant when Christians would tell me that before. Yeah. I never knew what it meant when I when I was a Catholic and, you know, heard about Jesus being Lord and Savior. That meant nothing to me. But then now it does, of course. And it did. And I, it was just. Yeah. And it's just been. um I opened the Bible and it was alive and I hungered for it. And, and I just, everything I had been looking for all those years, I kept saying it's right here. Like, I can't believe it was all sitting right here. I was looking everywhere for it and it's all here in his word. So, yeah. So, you know, we are an apologetics podcast. And so one of the things you've done an amazing job of describing that experience and telling us what it was like and how God delivered you from it. And one of the things that we always are are wanting to know is, you know, I'm certain whether it's someone who's listening on the podcast or watching on the live cast, uh, they might know someone who is sucked into the New Age movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, What would be maybe some tools that you could even uh, encourage them to use to engage uh, one of those individuals? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I've, I have, well, it's kind of different because I've been in it and, and most of the people that I've been trying to evangelize to that are in the movement know me. Yeah. So, um, I, this might seem obvious or maybe not, I don't know, but the first thing first is do you have an actual relationship with them? Because yeah, I, I think that's really key. That doesn't mean you have to, but if you have an opportunity to really like be in relationship with them and really talk to them, because like we talked about at the beginning of this, there is really no um, clear definition of what new age is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so you need, it's, it's very helpful to get to know, what a lot of people, and again, I didn't know I was in new age. Yeah. A lot of people don't know they're in new age. Yeah. Most people don't. And if you say, well, that's, that's, you know, a new age practice. It's like, no, no, it's not. It's just healing and, or whatever it might be. So um, well said. That's yeah. so well said. Well, I mean, it's disguised itself as pop culture. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, yo- yoga is just uh, another thing you do during the week. You know, it's, yes. um, and I mean, like I said, I mean, we've had the episode where we talked about yoga and stuff like that to where it's like, if you're just doing the exercises, 
it's for yeah, exercise yeah, yeah. sake there's a difference but you know whenever you're, like you're saying you got into it you were just doing mm-hmm. yoga and you really didn't know but then like you kept on getting led and led and led by all mm-hmm. this other stuff uh, because you're making friends you're saying i'm sick i need help here and they give you something and then they tell you what it's all about and you're getting led so it's like a slow progression into it yes um, and so yeah so now you're dealing with with people that's doing the same thing or have been have done the same thing so my question is is like you know like you 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 say you've made your relationship that is the Mm -hmm. most obvious we do need to love people um and loving them is not just standing back Mm -hmm. um even though there's a time and place to where you know we can say public air something out or whatever but really it's that you know loving people um and, and getting with them. So like how, mm-hmm. I, I guess maybe but to better apply for apologetic, like how are you doing that? Yeah. Um, really so, is the question that would be good to ask. So the other hard thing with new age is that um, they believe, you know, love is love is love is mm-hmm. love. So if you, so kind of like what my friend said when I asked her, how did I respond to you? And she said, oh, you just, thought it was my, you know, and I remember just thinking, that's cool. I'm glad, like, that's great. I'm glad that Christianity works for you. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the response. Like, I wouldn't even say there's heavy resistance to it. It's more just this open, free, do what, do what works for you kind of thing. So it's almost like you have to really, um, I, I think the biggest thing as in all apologetics that I'm learning, <laughs> that I'm starting to learn um, no matter who you're speaking to, is trying to find, okay, and to get them to admit or confess to what their actual standard of truth is. Like, where yeah. does that come no. from? And I mean, that's that's with all. And so with whoever, you know, wherever so, they're coming from. Yeah. So you do need to get to those definitions and those presuppositions because what you're doing there is you're presupposing a pragmatic theory of truth. If it works, yes. then it's right or if it works it's true yes. um and then you can get into that subjectivism well what's true for me so like with the christianity it's working for you so it's true for you yes um, this is working for me um but it sounds like in your in your testimony you know you were depressed the whole time mm-hmm. and so what you really need to ask these people and probe is uh, relationally it sounds like we need to go but is it yeah you know are you happy you know you were chasing mm-hmm. Um, you were chasing this like drugs. Um, so yes. you, you constantly needed a high. So you were not yes. happy. And so it, you were, you kept on going back to it um, mm-hmm. as your, you know, it's like, I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to do this, but Hey, this is something I can do. Um, and it seems natural. It seems okay. It's working every time I go to it. It seems to make me happy because mm-hmm. I am not happy. And mm-hmm. so you need until you got exposed at the very end there to where you had nothing but yourself. Yes. And yes. so it sounds like through her testimony, you know, the people that are listening to this right now, you know, they, they've got the apologetic already just in the testimony of yeah. that. So, but that's wonderful. So well, are you, yeah, Well, go ahead. I will just to say though, that, do, that the happiness thing isn't, doesn't always work either. Like, are you happy? Because also, you know, to, there was a long time where I really believed I was. I was fully convinced I found the truth. I found the light and nobody's going to take me from that. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to uphold that for a long time. I didn't want to let go of it because that would mean letting go of my entire identity yeah. of being this powerful, spiritual healer person. And not just my identity as that, but my, um, my communities, your livelihood. So they might say, yeah, um, I am happy. Actually, I am free. Um, Christianity is stuffy. You know, they might say that that's why, um, God, I mean, there's so many different examples I could give. And, um, a lot of them I'm speaking, you know, I'm in those sort of conversations now, and it's very, very specific and unique to the person, um, based off of their responses and, um, and what they're seeking. But the main thing is that they believe that they are whole, um, at the core, we just need to remember that we are. And so I think the big one is to always just share the gospel, 
go back to the beginning, the fall, um, our sinful nature, and go from there. So, again, the Imago Day always comes into play mm -hmm. and when we're discussing everything. Yeah. One of the questions that we got from one of our folks in the live feed was, um, mm -hmm. would you, when you look back on this now, would you say that you were uh, possessed uh, by a demon? Would you describe some of the things you've dealt with as demon possession? Uh, mm -hmm. How would you situate that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I probably would say I was possessed because um, I was in a, a trance and I even I remember my friends uh, who were even in the movement were very concerned about me because my eyes, um, I, there was something in my eyes that um, it was almost like I was hypnotized and and, I, and then it kind of looking back, I think in a way I was, uh, and I don't, it would be a lot of assumptions to go there, but yeah, I would say I was possessed. And now when you think of possession, you might think of someone being like completely uncontrollable and, you know, um, saliva coming out of their mouth or, you know, I, I that, that, those kinds of things weren't happening to me at all. I mean, I looked like a normal human being and I acted like a pretty normal human being. Um, but I think if you looked in my eyes and just the way I spoke and that I had no truth, you know, I, I just was sort of in the clouds all the time. Um, so yeah, I would say that there was a possession there. And so I will say that too, when I was saved, um, all those gifts that I thought I had were gone. Like I don't, I used to be able to know what was going on in people's minds. I knew the things people were hiding before they even told me they were hiding them. Um, you know, trying to be intuitive all the time, all of that was, and even it was like, I wanted nothing to do with them. It, it repulsed me. Like I just wanted to be in the word and it's still that way to this day. I want to be in the word and, and that's really it. Like it, I want to evangelize, I'm studying more apologetics, that kind of stuff. But as far as like the spiritual gifts and seeking those experiences, I, I, I get kind of nauseous just thinking about it. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, there was one question we probably won't have time to get to, mm -hmm. but we just so appreciate yeah. your time, Andrea. And uh, yes. I will certainly be sure to pray for you for god to Thank continue to work you. in your life and uh please uh we would love to have you on again sometime uh, in the future um we are mm -hmm. sure thankful for what you are doing and yes. I'm glad that god has got you in a good school where you are able yes. to um yeah you're at a christian yeah. university and just want to encourage you to study apologetics we are an apologetics podcast and we've been blessed by mm -hmm. some really great tools that uh, god has empowered us with uh saw that I'll you and watching and listening uh, thank you well i saw that you ha you follow owen strand so there's a great a theologian yes. for you uh, we're big fans of james white and jeff durbin yes. if you haven't checked out i love both of them outstanding very very good mm -hmm. well we will let you go thank you so so much thank you, you. Yeah, thank you have a great evening in colorado and uh i let Adam, say go Broncos. Go Broncos. Actually, uh, <laughs> yeah, go, God bless and go Broncos, right? Yes. Tim Tebow. <laughs> well, you have a wonderful yeah, time. And, okay. Yeah. <laughs> GB, GB squared. Yeah, yes. A, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, thank okay. you so much for being on the podcast. Thank yeah, anything you. Anything you need good in night. the future, we're here. You have a good night. Good night. Oh, All man, right. That was, that was great. A, two shows. Two, two shows in, in one, one night. Dude, day. We'll have both shows drop under an hour if we can finish this up in just a minute but yeah. you do whatever you need to say don't let I me cut you off mean, brother because, no, no, I just, uh, because i never want to cut you <laughs> off because god uses you to say good things oh, no, and you no. do a good job so good job of uh, of summarizing things effectively oh no so, no i just think uh you know uh, this this has definitely been great especially in light of uh, dealing with uh, christian witches mm -hmm. um hopefully we need to still uh, reach out to calvin witcher um because we have in the past we've We've had a dialogue via email with Calvin Witcher, which was a guy that spoke at the uh, first annual Witches Convention. But this call, this is all that same kind of stuff. It's the same basis. Um, you're fine. You can be deity. You can be whatever you want. You tell yourself that, and then you 
uh, move through this world by that standard, by your standard, by the way you see things. And so um, this is a powerful testimony. We, we get the apologetic through the testimony. That's she's, right. she's wonderful. I mean, that was, she laid it out. Yeah. Um, and the, again, Christians, we need to take this stuff seriously. Um, this stuff is still around. Um, you know, you can still be, you can be a cessationist in a way and still agree that, um, the, that evil happens, that, uh, that Satan is going around like a roaring lion and seeking those he can devour. Um, and so we have to treat this. We can't, again, write this off. We can't go, we can't, again, like I said, borrow from a naturalistic perspective. I agree. I think that's one of the big, big so, ways that people like this, uh, that things like this get discounted is someone just imports a naturalistic worldview right onto that and say, oh, no, that yeah. stuff doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. You know, it does. Satan is powerful. Yeah. But Christ is more powerful. Yes. Uh, and Christ is king, and he will deliver folks. And so uh, that's the thing that is, in my mind, just grabs people into a rat hole is, look at this power that we've got. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they get consumed into that concept. But, yeah. And we serve a more powerful God. Again, just like Peter, like Jesus when he asked, Whenever he asked Peter who he was, and he said, you didn't get this from uh, flesh and blood, but you got this from above. Right. And we saw it. And we heard her testimony. Amen. And she can be a testimony to Scripture. And it's amazing that she's stuck there. So, again, uh, if there's anybody out there that has friends or is caught up in this stuff, please get a hold of us. Um, if you have friends, listen to her testimony. Yeah, um, get out there. The Serve so can hear your it. king by serving the gospel to everyone especially you know since we're talking about new age um listen for words listen for words stealing um we've talked about that before um you know being spiritual they're they're open um just like Acts 17 um when paul's at the areopagus he realizes that they're religious that they have all these gods he had they have this altar to this unknown god and that's where we were gospel or where paul goes in and goes well here's jesus and that's what we need to do whenever we confront people that are spiritual. That's right. Like, oh, I see you're spiritual in every way. Well, you know, what makes sense of that? And we know um, from Scripture that in Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And the fear of the Lord, if you go to the Old Testament, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom and the knowledge of who? The Holy One is insight. And so you see the bridge of the, of the testimony of Scripture that reads Christ. Um, every line of it. So um, that's all I have to uh, Dude, I comment. I think that's great. Long, I uh, I appreciate it. Well, yeah. we've had a great show today. Yeah, two great two shows. I don't got to spend a lot of good time with you today. So yes. we will have a bit of a break yes. in our shows from here. Yes. We, so we will again, be taking uh, respective little trips with our families and stuff. And that's, you know, it's summertime. And so pray for us as we travel and do things, especially for that little kid that you hear in the background. Pray for him. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, we will not be um, live for a couple of weeks, but um, we've got two shows that we'll be putting out there for content. you got a lot of time to do that. And like I've said, uh, use the time. If you utilize this time to watch our podcast, we thank you so much for that and appreciate your support in that. But um, instead of uh, watching our show for an hour, um, go and look up New Age. Go and uh, look up... Uh, uh, critical race theory that we talked about earlier today as well. Um, utilize that time. Um, redeem it um, for the purpose of serving. Don't just uh, collect knowledge by taking in podcasts and taking information um, because that information in this podcast is supposed to go, go. Um, and so we all need to remind ourselves to go and do instead of just getting our knowledge and Pat That's ourselves right. on the back and go and look at me and my brain. So, so we're back yeah. on July 8th. Yes. And it'll actually be at about yes. 9 a.m. with Rob Phillips at the yes. Missouri Baptist Building. And That'll so be it'll be a big day. great day. Yeah. yeah. Really so he's day. got a, can we announce the surprise, I guess? Or he has a new book. He'll okay. Have a book. Yeah. I think it'll drop like a week before we show up. It yeah. might be dropping that day. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So Rob Phillips, you know, um, he's, we've talked about books before. Um, with him, there's this will be a the new like book. fourth or fifth time mm -hmm. we've had him on. Yeah, so it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, he's dropping a new book. We got we've got advanced copies of it, so we're going to read it and be able to uh, talk with him. And it's a very um, foundational apologetical issue. Yeah, and so it'll be awesome to be able to go up. We'll be able to go up to uh, the the Missouri Baptist Building again, like we did last year, um, and enjoy time up there in Jeff City. So um, keep uh, keep your prayers for that, and uh, keep Rob Phillips in your prayers as he comes out with this new book and that uh, it gets utilized around the state of the Missouri because uh, that's what it's there for. So. Right. 
Anyway, I guess, yeah, we are a minute, an hour and four minutes, so we're done, and Dave needs to go home. So with that said, this is the Tag You're It. Well, actually, wait. I'm Ray Ray. This is Dave. And this is the Tag You're It podcast. Solely. Deo. Gloria.